talking about it anymore. I want that assignment. Now, you looky here, Chad. Assignments like this don't come along every day, and I'm taking it. Over my outstretched carcass, you're taking well, it. Well, now, if that's the way it's got to be, that's the way it's got to be. What are you two asking about? Just anyway? never mind, Reese. This is between Chad and me. That's right. Now, I'm volunteering. What's between Chad and you? I'm volunteering for that special assignment. What special assignment? Oh, Reese, you wouldn't even want it. Reese. Oh, now look, Joe, I'd hate to have to fight you for it. Well, then you better back off, Chad. I want that assignment. So do I. It's a lot better than escorting an army pay wagon. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll flip you. <laughs> With that two-headed coin of yours, no chance. Well, then, uh, I was about cutting cards. My deck. I'll even open a brand new one. All right. <laughs> Looks like we won't have to. Captain? I come to volunteer for that special assignment. Are you sure, Reese? 100%, Captain. That's for sure. Yes, sir. Well, get your old boots and a shovel. Old boots? Well, you don't want to clean out the stable in your good ones, do you? They done it to me again. You know, I kind of hate to think old Reese back in Laredo on Stapleton. Uh, sure you do. I do, and that's a gospel. Breaks my heart. But you figured as long as somebody had to do it, it might well be him instead of me. That's right. Besides, old Reese never was one to enjoy escorting a payway. Will you explain that to him when we get back to Laredo? No, oh, Chad. Go. Go. That's a runaway. Most of riders. I do not know. Well, since they are aiding the lady in distress, we will have to create a new diversion for the troopers somehow. You ride toward the wagon. And then when you hear the rifle shot, you know what to do. And then see how convincingly you can play dead. Ungrateful gentlemen, but I must ask you both to dismount and surrender your weapons. Hey, tome las armas y caballos. Drop your weapons, please. Quickly. Thank you, gentlemen. It uh, pains me to reward your gallantry with deceit. 
However, now that we have what we came for, I must leave. Vamanos, bonjour. Feeling we're gonna have a tough time explaining this one to the captain. Yeah. Sir, as near as we can figure it, it was stolen by the French army. Oh! The what? The French army, Captain? From the beginning, where is our payroll? Well, sir, there was this wagon, and it was going lickety split. Joe and I figured it to be a runaway, and there was a woman driving it. Only by the time Joe and I got there and got it stopped, it, well, it wasn't any woman driving it, it was this French fellow. You're not very convincing at all, Chad. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Now, that's a hopeful sign. All right, Chad, now start again. Well, sir, there yeah, was this way, sir. Certainly, Sergeant. Well, the more I think about it, the more convinced I become, Captain. That was a military operation. May I? Go on. This is the road. Wagon's here. Now, look what they did to us. First off, they had the road flank here and here. Then they broke out the wagon here. I ain't forgetting what... It went in this direction. Well, normally, you'd send two men after a runaway wagon. Correct. Then they'd have swept down on our right flank, cutting us off from those two men that after that buckboard. And bring in the rest of the force in behind you. But your boys spoil that. So they hit us with another diversion, right here. Drew our attention to it. Pulled off their plan anyway. I ain't forgetting what. Shh. Don't you shush me, Reese. The captain's thinking. Sergeant, I'm going back to the fort with you. Have your men draw mounts on the ranger's stock. We'll move out as soon as you're ready. Yes, sir. There's going to be another payroll. This time, the Rangers will take full responsibility for it. Maybe we'll get a chance to match tactics with this French army. Ain't no army could match nothing with our company, Captain. Why, we can outride, outshoot, and outtalk them. That, too. That's for sure. Joe, shake out every Ranger you can find in the barracks. Chad, go over to the billy room at the hotel. Be back here in 15 minutes. Yes, sir. All right, Captain. Well, uh, what about me, Captain? Oh, well, I think you have just about enough time to finish cleaning out the stable. Uh, I'd have had them outlaws already if I'd have been sitting in a saddle instead of pushing a shovel. Reese, I was just talking to myself, Captain. No, do you really think you could track down those outlaws? Any time, day or night, why, you just send us out and we'll find them and we'll bring them back. And that's for sure, Captain. All right, Reese. And maybe you're right. We shouldn't put all our forces in one place. Now, you, Joe, and Chad get on their trail. The rest of us go after the payroll. Oh, you're thinking every doggone minute you don't miss a thing. I'll go saddle up the horse. I clean the stable first. Uh, yes, sir. Not a thing. Never miss a doggone dad blasted cussed thing. Don't forget nothing, neither. <laughs> I can't figure out why they're holding on to that wagon. Hold, hold on. Sure slowing them down, Sam. Well, there was a couple of cases of carbines and a mess of ammunition in that wagon. Could be they want that, too. Well, you know what I'm wondering? Huh. I'm wondering if maybe the French haven't started a war with us. Oh, Reese. Well, maybe they could. No, couldn't be. If there was a war, somebody would have said something. Troopers would have heard. Besides, Napoleon III's got better sense than to start a war with Texas. The fact is, he's, uh, he's off in jail somewhere, Reese. Well, he's got it coming. Besides, can't be a war going on with nobody knowing about it. Can't be. Well, as long as they hold on to this wagon, even old Reese could follow him. Your army down there? Uh, it looks 
looks like it, yeah. Well, then let's bust in and get what we come for. Doesn't look like there's much chance of getting by them sentries without us being spotted. Yeah, and they're just, uh, just liable to be a few other troopers down there. some cover over there. Let's get the horses out of sight and figure out our next move. Come on. Good thinking, Reese. Oh, you know, look at that Gatlin gun. I guess. Well, there's one thing for sure. It ain't no gang we're up against. That place is like a fort. Hey, maybe there is a war going on. Huh? Oh, Reese, it would have been in the papers or something. A war or no, I'm going to tell you one thing. There's no way we're gonna get into that camp without their sentry seeing us. Yeah, or getting chopped to pieces by that Gatlin gun. Well, we'll just have to go in after dark, that's all. Oh, it's a big risk. Yeah, it looks like to me it's a, it's gonna be just about as rough day or night. Well, whose side you on, anyhow? You're talking like, like there ain't a blame thing we can do. And that's right, Reese. There ain't nothing we can do till we can make a pretty good guess how many there are and just how they're set up. Yeah, well, I figure one of us is gonna have to walk right in there. Well, you mean sort of, sort of like sending in a spy? Just like a spy. We'll, we'll cover you, Chad. Oh, Reese, I'd go in a minute, but they've already seen me. Well, they, they've seen me too, Chad. Well. No, I ain't gonna walk right in the middle of all them soldiers. I'll tell you that right now. It's all right, Reese. Didn't expect you to. Now, this fella we're gonna have to send in there, he's gonna have to be mighty resourceful and, and clever. Ooh, is he gonna have to be clever? Well, and now, you see, the most logical candidate to be Captain Parmley. Yeah? Uh, of course, Parmley's out, uh, out getting that payroll. Mm. Well, Chad, why don't we send one of the others? Well, there's, there's Shay and... Uh... No. Valdez. No, they're out with the captain, Chad. Oh, that's right. Hey, listen. Hey, what, Miller, about... what about Miller? Oh, Miller's a jackass. Well, that one. Now, this fella, he's gonna have to pretend to be a gun runner or something like that. You see, he's gonna have to outsmart them fellas. Beat them at their own game, right? I'm going. Where are you going? Into that camp. Reese, you're all ranger. All right, you got your story straight? Yeah, sure. I got it straight. All right, now, don't ask them too many questions. Just let them tell you. All right. Now, we'll be waiting here for you, Reese. What's your name? Reese. Oh, you know my name. Your spy name. Clay Master. But I still don't see why I can't be one of the dogs. Point that thing at me and I'll bust it over your skull. Who are you? What are you doing here? Maston. Clay Maston. Ah. I have heard of you. Well, yeah, that's fine. Where's the boss man? I want to talk to him. Why? Quit wasting my time, will you? Just take me to the head man. Follow me. Monsieur Mestine, why did you come here? Well, I've uh, been hearing some interesting things about you and your army. Looks like you've been doing real well for yourselves. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I thought we might be able to talk about something. Something in common, if you know what I mean. Monsieur Mestine. You come here with only that vague thought in your mind? Well, as a matter of fact, the Rangers have been making a pretty rough on me and my boys. And you seem to be out foxing them. And I like the way you doing things. I really... I... I like your way of doing things. And, uh, I got thinking that maybe a... Maybe I'd just like to throw in with you. Depending, of course, on, uh, what your plans are. And what do you intend to contribute to this proposed partnership? 
Oh, that all depends now. Uh, men? Money? We do not need men. Money? How much money? Well, I don't know, about uh, 15,000. Depending, of course, like I said, on uh, what you're planning to do with your little army. 15,000, huh? Where is this money? Now, you don't expect me to tell you that until you give me a little more information. Come here. Sit. Thank you. My name is André Bouchy. And these three men, Pierre, Paul, and Dubois, are my corps of officers, the nucleus of an army I intend to gather in Mexico. As soon as I have enough capital to properly finance my plans. Ooh. Hey, just exactly what are their plans? During the time Maximilian was in power, we all held certain proprietary interests in Mexico. When Maximilian was uh, executed, these interests uh, slipped from our command. Yeah. And you want to go back, don't you? And take over? Hey, that's quite a plan, all right. We have gathered already close to $14,000 in gold the past few weeks. Of course, this is not enough. So, your $15,000 would be most welcome. Depending, of course, on what you would want in return. Well, well uh, I'll just have to, have to think about that. Of course. Oh, maybe we could discuss the matter further over dinner. Yeah. Paul, see that Monsieur Mastine is made comfortable. Proposition, gentlemen. The man is an incorrigible boor. With fifteen thousand dollars. How do we know that? We don't. But if he is what he appears to be, what have we to lose? And if he is not, it would be quite a simple matter to uh, dispose of him. Ha ha ha! Oh, you should have seen it. Me and the boys, we hit that town from both ends. And boy, the local law knew what was happening. We cleaned out three banks and was gone in the way. <laughs> well, it, it looks like I'm out of champagne again. Champagne is to be sipped, not goat. Well, I don't see how you expect to get a kick out of just sipping it. I like a man-sized drink. Sour and ash, corn. You know you're drinking. <laughs> Here. Ah. Oh, I'll never forget the time we hit Coffeeville. Boy, that was an afternoon I'll never forget. Monsieur Mestine. Yes, sir? Concerning that $15,000 of yours, exactly where is it? Well, now, um... It's in a... It's in a Chihuahua bank. I always bank my money under another name. And I, uh, I figured we could, uh, pick it up along the way when we're heading for Mexico. That seems like quite a good plan, if we come to terms. Well, I, um, I figure my 15000 ought to buy, uh, oh, say, uh, 10% of the loot when we get to Mexico. Seem fair to you? Oh, yes, yes. Quite fair. Well, now, of course, since I, uh, I told you where my 15 is, uh, don't you think you ought to, you ought to show me where you keep that 40,000 of yours? I mean, uh, I kind of, kind of like to make sure that you're not playing the game with empty pockets. Are you suggesting that we have not... You well... Monsieur Mastin's request is not unreasonable. Follow me, please. Voilà. Ici.
thousand dollars in gold. Well, we... <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bravo. Would you uh, care to count it? No. No, no thanks. I'll trust you. As a matter of fact, I ain't saying too good anyways. <laughs> that champagne's got a man size kick to it after a while. What a pity you had to practically deplete our supply of champagne to find that out. Uh, Monsieur Mastin, perhaps it would be better for you to retire for the night, huh? Yeah, I, I guess you're right at that. Bravo. Hey, voila. Yeah, mm. Paul, mm. let's go, Monsieur Mastin, back to his tent. You know, it, uh, it just occurs to me, Boucher, with all that gold lying in there, needs protecting. Uh, just how many troops you got in this here camp, anyway? I mean, besides you and the officers here. Eight Mexicans, plus my personal cook and valet. Hmm. Well, I guess that's enough for openers. See y'all tomorrow. Bonsoir. These $15,000 is conveniently in a bank in Chihuahua, yet he demands to see our group. Du bois. I told you, Monsieur Mastin's request was not unreasonable. But you are still suspicious of him. <clears throat> or you would not have told him that we have only eight Mexicans in the camp with us. The rule of war, Du bois. Never let a possible enemy know your true strength. Do not think that his $15,000 is so necessary that we need to take the risk. 15000 is 15000 I do not trust him. There is no need to trust him. Just keep a close watch on him. Saw, I even saw the gold and the money in the main tent. Oh, I had him treating me like a king. A drinking champagne and good eats. <laughs> I'll tell you, being a spy ain't such a bad way of living. No, sir. Reese. Reese, <coughs> did they happen to make mention of how many of them there are? Well, as a matter of fact, they did. Us spies just don't let little things like that get past us. Mm -mm. Well, how many? Oh, there was... Boucher and his officers and about eight or ten Mexicans. Uh, shucks, all, uh, all we got to do is slip in there the way you slipped out. Can't be did. What can't be did? Just can't be did. I snuck by that outpost by the skin of my teeth. Now, if I was to go back, odds are, odds are they'd spot me right off. Nope. The way I see it, them guards around that camp can't be snuck by. Well, of course, I done it, and... I don't mean to take nothing away from you fellers, but, uh, well, you ain't me, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, you think you can get back in there, Reese? Well, if anybody can, I can. But I ain't. Well, now, if you could slip back into that camp, Reese, you'd knock out a couple of them guards while Chad and me come roaring down. You'll be dead. Them guards are set up. They ain't no way of sneaking up on them. Now, let me see. If we could get, uh, if we get them to split up, Get some of them to ride right on out of there. Why, 
Why, they'd cut down the guards around the camp. Yeah. Like if they found out that Captain Parmalee was going to take in another payroll to Laredo. Well, they'd have to ride out to go after it and cut down the odds by half, maybe more. Now, what kind of scheme is that? Setting them outlaws on the captain. Reese, you heard what the captain said. He said he'd be ready for anything. Chad, maybe Reese ain't got no confidence in our captain. I got confidence. Well, if old Clay Masson was just tricky enough to sneak back into that camp, get them fellers to ride out after that payroll. Why, shucks, we'd ride on in there and get that gold and go right on out after them outlaws. By the time they was hitting the captain's wagon, we'd be right behind them, catch them between us. Mm-hmm. And all I gotta do is to get back into that camp and get old Boucher to ride off and ambush the captain. That's exactly right, Reese. And you know something? I'd give my right arm right up to here and two horses if I could take your place. Ah, uh, me too. Hey, you know, Chad, it's, uh... It's not the medal old Reese is gonna be getting that I'd want. It's not the parade or, or the glory. It's just knowing that you've done something that no other man alive could do. Mm. Mm. Take it easy with that gun, will you? Well, Monsieur Mastine. Ça va, merci. You walk in your sleep? Ah, uh, I was just looking around. Seeing how you got things set up. Oh. Do you approve? Not 100%? No, sir, I don't. Do you know how far I got before that sentry took me in? First off, I tricked that fella of yours that was watching my tent. And if that ain't enough, I walked right out of your camp. Went right past your outpost, and I come back. <laughs> and you were taken. And that ain't saying much for your guards, I'll tell you that. Yes, but as Dubois said, you were taken. And <laughs> I do not believe for one moment that you... He sure got a mouth on him, ain't he? Well, perhaps he is a bit overzealous, over suspicious, but he is still my officer. Well, next time I'll just have to kill him, that's all. Well, at least you make yourself clear, Monsieur Meston. Yeah, I'm beginning to wonder just how good your men are. So far, I count one loudmouth and one Mexican guard that knows what he's doing. And you, I figure you know what you're doing. Merci. The next time we are uh, at work, you will see how good they are. Huh. How's tomorrow? <laughs> Monsieur Mastine, our operations are built, not taken out of a hat. Uh -huh. You think you could build something if the loot was about 12,000 in gold? A bank? Just yes or no. We could. Well... Uh -huh. They're bringing another payroll into Laredo tomorrow. Why do you wait till now to tell me that? Well, I was out checking your men, wondering about letting you in on this. Now, the rangers are bringing it in. Won't be heavily guarded, because cause they don't want to attract no attention. Probably take most every man you got if you're going to get the gold, though. Bonsoir. <laughs> Loudmouth. You mean Dubois? Under the circumstances, I thought the best to send him on to Mexico to locate the supply points and the campsites. Hey, that's a good idea. Yes. Yeah, take the point. Dos, tres, cuatro. Four Mexicans. That means there's four of them left, uh, according to Reese. Yeah. Three for you, one for me. Yeah.
Gentlemen, you have done a most foolish thing. I'll buy that. If you please. Always knew Reese couldn't count past eight. Uh, no good, Joe. They got us trussed up like Sunday pigs. Help me down. Information seems well founded, Monsieur Mastine. Here, found. Hold up. Well, what are you doing here? I am capturing a Texas Ranger, Captain. A Texas A Texas Ranger. You've been out in the sun too long, loudmouth. Shortly after you left this morning, Captain, I caught two other rangers breaking into your quarters. The same two who interfered with our operation the last time. Interesting. Lies. All lies. It was all merely a ruse to draw us away from the camp so his two friends could get to the goal. Well, that'd be a fine story, except for that wagon coming up there. That don't look like no lie to me. What do you say, Boucher? Here, take a look. There are two men riding ahead on the ridge. Undoubtedly, there are also some armed men inside the wagon. That's an excellent defense, yes. I would use it myself. Wonderful strategy. There's a change. at your service, gentlemen. What is this, some kind of a joke? Ain't no joke, Captain. He got bullets, I ain't. Here, look. It was either this or you getting bushwhacked. I only wish to relieve you of your peril, gentlemen, in as painless a manner as possible. Reese, how the devil... Captain, it's a long story. Your pistols, please, gentlemen. Ah, 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 ah. Handles first, huh? Throw them here. Bravo. Oh. Now your rifles. Same thing, huh? Now dismount, please. Very casually. I do not want to alarm the driver. Now take your horses to the other side of the road, huh? Come on, Cactus. Monsieur Mastine, keep your rifle pointed at me. No. Capitaine. Capitaine, when the wagon reaches us, I want you to explain the situation to them. Tell your men to leave their arms in the wagon and to step off to the side of the road. Support the 
We have lost a payroll, but won the company of Capitaine Parmali of the Texas Rangers. I wonder how far down this pole stuck in the ground. Why? Well, if we pulled up out of there, slip our hands out from under it, maybe we'd have a better chance of getting out of here. Oh, good idea. Worth a try, anyway. All right, grab a hold. That's coming. Oh, I can feel the bottom of it. Can you hold it there a second? Yeah, we'll get it out of there. Captain, what is the good of taking prisoners? What good? The Texan government will pay a certain ransom for the return of captured rangers. But this one, the spy, he should be shot. You have a point there, Dubois. Boucher, right now I figure Reese is maybe worth a dollar six bits to me. But to you, he's worth $2,400. Now it hardly seems right to throw that kind of money away. Money is not a consideration, Capitaine. It goes much deeper than that. I love a worthy adversary. I am, after all, a professional soldier. But you boys right. That one came as a spy. For the rules of warfare dictate he be shot. Captain Boucher, the rules of warfare hardly apply in this case. Yes, they do, Capitaine. And you as an officer and a gentleman should know that. Do well, the firing squad. Your men, form a line over there. Line four? Not your handkerchief. See, all right. I'd sooner have some more of that champagne. You there.
Attention Well, Captain, I got my boots on. But by golly... Prepare to fire. Don't feel bad, Captain. There's always a chance their guns will jam. They came. There's two more for you, Ken. Hang on. Good to see you, Captain. Good to see you, Chad. Do you have any idea where the gold is? Well, I think Reese knows where it is. Where's the gold? It's in the tent. In the tent, Captain. Bring it out, Reese. Well, Captain, I believe it's customary for the commander to surrender his sword. Thank you. Yeah. Governor sent that medal down himself, Reese. And words out that it's solid gold. Solid gold. Solid gold. Yes. And let me tell you something. Nobody ever deserved that medal more than you do, Reese. And that's a pure gospel. Why? Why, sneaking yourself into them French fellas' confidence like that? Oh, and, oh. and standing up in that firing squad with that, that smile on your face. Oh. Well, there it, it wasn't no sense in crying. Chad? Chad, there's just not many men around alike today with that kind of nerve. Yeah, and that's a fact. Reese, it's a pleasure riding with you. Well, you can ride with me any time you want. Thanks, Reese. There. How do I look, huh? Fit for burying. Finish tying this kerchief and we'll get going. Come on. Uh, 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 now, now, Joe and I talked about that, Reese. And, and, well, as much as we want to, we, we just don't feel we ought to go with you. Now, you see, this is your big day, Reese. And we figured it ought to just be you and the captain. Private. Well, uh, uh, I don't mind if you're there. No, 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 we're gonna wait up here for you, Reese, and, uh, now you remember, stand tall when he pins it on you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
come for my medal, Captain. What medal? For being a spy and being brave. It's me, Reese. You know what medal? The governor? Solid gold? Two guys. Them two guys. Reese, you find Joe and Chad. Tell them they have stable duty for a week. It won't do them no good, Captain. Yeah, but it'll keep them off the street while they're healing up. <laughs>